This is Inside Kids by Grant Hall. Once upon a time, these two kids went on a hike. They were inside kids, so they they knew nothing about hiking. Most of the time, they were playing on their phones. A couple of minutes in the hike, they fell off a cliff because they weren't paying any attention due to looking at their phones. Thankfully, they fell into a river. They were still very injured. They looked at each other and said, I wish we would have stayed home. They sat down and cried for a little bit. After they cried, they looked at each other and said, we have to get crafty. Like, like I said, they were inside kids. They went to pick up sticks and rope to build a raft. After six hours, they were done. It was okay. When they got in the water, they sailed away. Soon, they saw a bull shark and a catfish. They were scared and said and said it was like the like shark doom three soon they heard don't be afraid they said what was that it's me down here the shark do you need directions the kids said yes yeah. the shark said go straight as and take a lift okay after a while they found russell county that was right next to their county wilson county in two hours, they, it was eight, 4 a.m. They stopped at a gas station and spent the night there. But first, they had to sneak in. They knocked on the door and said to the cashier, Your wife called. You won the lottery. The cashier said, I did. I'm out of here. Bye. They said, That was easy. They spent the whole night there. When they woke up, they got up and walked all the way to Wilson County. On the walk home, they both said they don't want to be inside kids anymore. The Tomahawk. Today started out as another day. Brooke got up and ate her breakfast, and then she sat in to do her NTI work. She she had started her homework. She she received a message that told her that there was a tomahawk with very, with special powers that would kill off the COVID-19 virus. She was all exci- she was all excited and knew that if the tomahawk could be found it would cure the sick and they could lift the quarantine and they will be able to go to go back to normal with no sickness she knew she couldn't do it on her own she contacted her her very best friend olivia to help her when olivia answered the phone and brooke told her what she had learned olivia was all in for finding the treasure map map to find the tomahawk they talked about how they could get together since there was a rule between distance between each person. The government president said if everyone couldn't be in a crowd, they had shut the school down. The girls were doing work at home for school. All business was closed, all because COVID-19 had made a lot of people sick. So Brooklyn and Olivia found this out that that inside of the elementary school was where, where they could find the treasure map and clues to find out where the tomahawk was. They had to figure out a way to get into the school without being seen since the school was locked up so they kids couldn't get in. The first thing they did had to, had to do was to find out when there wouldn't be anybody in the school so so that was going to be a little bit hard but they had to do it to save the world and fix fix it so they could go to school and have their graduation they wanted their family and friends to share in in the joy of their of them graduating. 
They wanted their family and friends to share them graduating, to watch them walk down to receive their diplomas. This was a very special time for the girls, and they wanted everyone to see them at their accomplishments. The time had come that Brooke and Olivia to go to the school. They had arranged to meet the meet outside the school at the back door, where it wouldn't be seen off the road. Both of them wore dark clothes and a lot wouldn't glow on their clothes. They hadn't seen each other in a month now. The Canova 19 had made the school be closed that all the school, the kids couldn't really miss seeing each other because they, they were more friends than friends. They were more than friends. They were more like sisters. They both had ideas about how to get inside the school. So they both decided ideas were great ones. So they worked with both ideas. Brooke, Brooke's idea was to make, make, could go discover so the janitor wouldn't hear so, something and go and check out what it was. Olivia's idea was to call the school and tell the janitor that he needed help in, in the classroom to get her on the phone, so she went, She had to leave the desk when she, they had to, had left the, left, left the day before they canceled school. That she needed it and remembered she had to leave it at the school so they decided Olivia and Brooke's idea and Olivia, uh, Olivia's idea could, Olivia could call the school and ask the janitor if he could come out. He would let her in long enough to get her on the phone. So Brooke hid behind the door so when the janitor opened the door, Olivia wouldn't be stuck over the door latch. Bert could get inside the school while Olivia had the janitor in her classroom after after her phone. It worked. Bert was in the school and ready for Olivia and the janitor went back in the classroom to get her phone. Bert hid beside the trophy case until Olivia and the janitor came back and Olivia left. And Olivia left outside, the janitor went back to work. Together they they went into the storage room where the, all the book fair items were stored. They, they thought they were alone until they heard the noise and saw the villain. And one of the persons who stopped the treasure map Map to cure the COVID-19 virus. She was looking in every classroom to find find the trunk with the treasure map that was supposed to be be inside. Brooke and Olivia, as fast as they could, find, could to find the trunk, so they could find the treasure map. They finally could find the trunk, and both were happy. They opened the doors and looked down the hall. Didn't see the villain. Then the person didn't want the COVID-19 to be stopped because he wanted to stay out of school, not like Brooke and Olivia. They wanted to be able to stop the COVID-19 to graduate and go to sixth grade as Brooklyn, Brooke and Olivia were going down the hall. Out came the villain and said, drop that mop broom in tripped Brick first then she went over after Olivia because Brick dropped the treasure map and fell against the wall. The villain grabbed it and then Olivia did a cartwheel and hit the villain and fell she fell and dropped the treasure map 
and the villain was captured by the janitor. Brick and Olivia got away. Now they went to a quiet place and looked over the treasure map. The treasure map was written in a way that they could not read. But together, Brooke and Olivia figured out the map. And they had to, to go back into school from the red building on the school property. It was hard because, because the buildings were brown, not red. They looked for a long time until Brooke shook Olivia's shoulder and said, What is that color letter? Under the brown paint was red world. The treasure map, said the tomahawk. Would it be under the hole, under the bench, in the mail, metal box, under the cloth? To find the bench, they went and found the box. And answered and destroyed the COVID-19. In the box was directions on the tomahawk. How to use the tomahawk. What they had to do was hold the tomahawk together and put it in the air. Their strong friendship would power up. Brooke and Olivia played together and God gave them strength to save the world. But together they locked their hands around the tomahawk and felt the tomahawk's power up and lifted it into the air and watched the power got stronger and it stit left, set off and the ray of light that covered the whole world, the power of their friendship saved the world. All the sickness was, was were healed and the COVID-19 was gone. The news from governor came the next day that something had some happened that all the sick people was healed and there was no more virus. That no, all the places could open and the children could go back to school. The kids were excited the villain wasn't. She had been inter interested for breaking in school. Friday came, all the kids got got to have their graduation and hope for everybody and the governor and the president was proud of Brooke and Olivia for their job they had done for the tomahawk. The tomahawk was put in a safe place. No one would know ever be able to church it. Everything was back to normal and there was no more sickness. The end written by Brooklyn Sturgeon in fifth grade. My name is Madeline McIntosh Sawyer. I am the daughter of James and Mary McIntosh. And this is a true story that Daddy and Mommy told me years ago that happened back in 1952, not long after they got married, and they lived in a really small little house over in a holler. And this is what they told me, and this is what it was like. It was a cold winter morning back in 1952 with a heavy white snow on the ground. Blankets of white snow covered the pine trees and the old apple tree in the yard. And mountains of snow covered the fruit trees in the orchard. The creek ran down the holler was frozen over with heavy snow and ice of winter. Nothing in the yard at the barn was moving. You could see the steam coming from the horse and the cow's nostrils as they came out of the barn into the morning blanket of white. The rooster crowed once or twice, but no need for more. Nothing at the barn or on the farm was moving that morning. The wind blew and the sun shined bright and glistened on the fresh layer of snow. It seemed as if time was standing still and the whole world was frozen. In the little three-room country house, James was up at the break of dawn, putting coal and wood in the old heating stove. He had been up several times throughout the night putting wood in the stove to keep plenty of heat in the small three-room house. The old shingled roof had held up really good in the heavy snow, and the windows were frosted over with frost so thick you couldn't see out of them. 
Scraping the frost from the inside of the window and looking outside made him realize that winter had made it up the holler and into the little house that sat near the creek. James had reached for his old overhauls that hang on a nail on the wall along with his flannel shirt. He put on his good warm socks and shoes that he had set by the old wood heating stove the night before. Patches on the knees of his old overalls didn't bother him none. They only made them warmer. One piece thermal underwear clung tightly to his body for extra warmth he needed to go out and face the cold winter morning. His wife Mary crawled out from under the good warm covers of her homemade quilts. She dressed warmly before she hurries into the kitchen to build a fire in the wood cook stove. She noticed right away that the dipper had frozen in the water bucket. She took some paper and a handful of kindling and put it inside the wood cook stove. She threw in some coal and a match and the stove began to crackle and pop. She set the water bucket on the stove to thaw it out. She put the coffee pot on to boil fresh hot coffee to get the day started right. She threw her boots on and headed out to the smokehouse. Inside the smokehouse, she looked around and she thought, how wonderful all the good cured pork was that hung from the smokehouse. Pork chops, bacon, hams, middling, ribs, and tenderloin filled the smokehouse benches and hung from the rafters, all salted down and cured great in the cold of the winter. She thought, whatever was she going to choose from since she had so much wonderful to choose from? But since it was so cold, she decided to choose the easiest thing to get. Bacon was her first choice. She took the large butcher knife and cut her a piece from the large piece that hung down from the rafters. Then back into the house, she flew through the deep snow. She sliced the bacon and laid it into a cast iron skillet to fry on top of the old cook stove that had the whole kitchen warm. Soon, the heavy smell of the bacon filled the room. Homemade biscuit and gravies would surely top all that off. James had gone to the barn with the milk bucket in hand to get fresh milk for breakfast. He fed the horse and the cow and the chickens. He went to the creek that ran down the holler and broke up the ice for the animals to drink so they would have drinking water. Making sure all was well at the barn, he headed off back to the house. Mary had a large skillet foot of bacon frying on the stove when he entered the door of the good warm house. He said, Mary, we will have fresh rabbit in the morning for breakfast. James had been watching a family of rabbits that had been seen going under the kitchen floor of the house. Now that the snow had fallen, he could see the footprints in them in the snow. So James told Mary that when the evening came, she could help him catch one of the rabbits for their breakfast in the morning. She was not at all excited about going outside in the snow to hunt rabbit, but oh well, she thought, we will see how it goes when the time comes. So she laughed it off and went on about her daily chores. So later in the evening, when night time came in the little house beside the creek, James told Mary to get the coal oil lamp and follow him into the kitchen and to close the kitchen door. She did as he asked. She, still wondering how they would catch a rabbit in the kitchen in the dark of the night, and she had hoped that he had forgotten all about the idea anyway, although a good fresh mess of fried rabbit would really be good for a change for their breakfast in the morning. On the way into the kitchen, James picked up the hammer. He needed it to pull the boards up from the kitchen floor. So Mary, with all of her curiosity on what was gonna happen next in the kitchen, went along with him. She held the coal oil lamp in her hand, and James told her to get up on top of the kitchen table and hold the lamp for light in the kitchen. James gently took the hammer and pulled a board up out of the kitchen floor so a rabbit could come up through the missing boards in the floor. Holding the lamp and laughing at her husband, Mary's eyes got larger and larger as her and James saw a rabbit come up through the missing board in the floor of the kitchen. James gently took the hammer and tapped the nails 
in the board back down in the kitchen floor as he had trapped the rabbit in the kitchen. Mary, still on top of the kitchen table, still holding the lamp, asked James in a comical way, what are you gonna do with it now? Well, James had it all planned out and he told Mary to go on to bed and he would take care of it now. So early the next cold snowy morning in the little house by the creek in the holler, two special people shared a heavenly breakfast of fried rabbit, gravy and biscuit cooked on an old wood cook stove. Lots of love, lots of laughter, and lots of special memories to hold on to the hearts for the rest of their lives for James and Mary McIntosh back in the early part of 1952. Laugh, yes we will, at this funny, comical, but true story. My daddy, James McIntosh, told me this story many years ago about how him and mom caught the rabbit in the kitchen one cold, snowy winter evening. I know it don't sound real, but these two special people really did this. And I am so thankful they told me and that I can write it down and share it with everyone who reads and enjoys this article. You know, there's a lesson to be learned here in this story. Never give up, never back down if you want something bad enough. With lots of love to both my parents who are James and Mary McIntosh.